sparkle on social media with my fancy sparkly jacket. Hello. How are you, my amazing fellow sovereigns? So, I was so excited. I was so inspired. I was coming off of my live stream with my sparkle on social media with my fancy sparkly jacket. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to pop on and talk about this. Because it was a topic that I just lightly touched on on sparkle on social media because we were de dealing with some really in-depth uh, social media concepts around relationships and relationship building, uh, specifically in your social and your business world and in your marketing. So that was super exciting. But this was a concept that I, I touched on and I just, I was like, oh my gosh, my fellow sovereigns need to know about this. Like we just need to know. So I was at this net, this uh, this party and I met this really amazing girl. She was really sweet and we started talking and she was very into personal development. And we started talking and having a really good rapport. And as I was having a conversation with her, the conversation started to become very much me asking her a lot of questions, very much, uh, and, and just out of just pure interest, like pure interest about her life, pure interest about her career goals, pure interest about what she was passionate about. And so I kept on asking all of these questions. And at, at the end of the conversation, um, after asking her all these questions, just out of interest, I have, I normally have a gut feeling when somebody should be a client and when somebody should be a friend. Um, and with this woman, I was like, I think she could be an amazing client. I think I could really serve her in a very, very powerful way. And I made the offer and, and she said no, and that's totally fine. But it wasn't about that. It was what happened after. So she said no, but she said, oh, but I'd love to go to lunch with you and pick your brain. And I was like, that's always a sign to me of a client who's not ready to invest. It's always a sign of somebody who aspires to learn more, but they're still grasping at freebies. They're grasping at like, oh, I want to do this thing, but they're not ready to really make that next level jump into the next realm of where they want to be. And they still have those things. And for me, I, I don't do lunches. Of I, I've done that in the past where I've done lunches where it's like, oh, let's go to lunch and then like I'll kind of work on it. And then it's like a blurred line thing. And it's just there is a difference between a, a client and a friend and a friend and a client. Now, I'm not saying like all of my clients, I absolutely 100 percent love. Like I love them and I eventually become very, very good friends with them and I know all about what's going on in their lives and I love them and I still keep in contact with the, with them. The thing is, is there is a difference though in how to know when somebody should be a client and when somebody should be a friend and, or if somebody could be both. Like for example, my, I, when I was at HPA this past, uh, this past September, I met the most amazing girl and I love her to pieces. She is now my accountability partner. We are growth friends and we made that commitment to each other to be growth friends. And she's awesome. Her name is Summer Scalero and she's amazing. And she and I, when we met, it was a mutual rapport of a mutual asking questions of a mutual interest in both parties' lives. And so if you find somebody, especially if you're in a service-based industry where your service is maybe wellness consulting or any sort of health coaching and people want to take you to lunch or to pick your brain, a lot of times that's a sign of somebody who may not, may or may not be ready to invest yet in your products or programs. And by you doing that, it also is a reflection of your own self-worth of where you are with your business and your industry. Like, for example, I told you, I used to do lunches before where I used to, like now I have very clear-cut procedures for what I go through with my clients before they come on board as an actual client. But with my like, for example, with my growth friend, with Summer, like she and I were talking and we were like, yeah, let's be growth friends. I literally asked her, I made like, I want, I, I'm all about having clear lines of communication. I said, let's 
let's, would you, would you want to be growth friends and accountability buddies? And she was like, absolutely. I love it. And since then I've had like the most productive few weeks ever, like amazing. And I love her to pieces and she's been doing like rocking it out. So the thing is, is with friendships, there is a mutual rapport of asking questions of like who, like a, an involvement in each other's lives with clients or with prospective clients or with people who may or may not want to use your services, you want to be aware of when people are asking to for a service that you provide and be aware of how to say no gracefully, of how to say, look, I love you and I appreciate your question. This is actually something I deal with on a professional standpoint. So if you would like to schedule a call, I am more than happy to schedule a call. I will even forego the application process for, you know, a 20, free 20 minute call. Um, but looking at that, how can you set your clear boundaries for who is a friend and who is a client? Because I have, I have lots of friends. I mean, on Facebook, I have like thousands of friends, but not all of them are necessarily close friends. Not all of them are like, and my very, very close friends, I don't coach. Like I, I will not coach them. I would not put my friendship with them at stake or at risk. I would rather them, I would rather refer them to another coach that I know, a colleague of mine who would be a better fit. But for my for the people who are my friends or more acquaintances, I see and gauge and feel how uh, I have certain boundaries and certain requirements and certain things that I kind of check off to see if that's if they fit more into the client category rather than in the friend category. So I challenge you, how do you delineate who is going to be a friend? and who is going to be a client. Now this is specifically for service-based professionals where you have a certain service, especially if you're in the knowledge-based field, like for example, therapists. Like I have one client, she is a therapist, and she was constantly getting her friends asking her for like free advice. And she was getting really, really, really annoyed with it. She was like, everybody's coming. I'm like, she's like, I'm always tired. Like, I always feel like I have to show up and I have to give advice. And like, I really don't want to go. And she was supposed to go down and hang out with her friend who was going through a divorce. And she's like, I know I'm going to have to play therapist and I really don't want to. And I said, well, that's actually more of a client thing. Like we can, like, where can you, how can you set? So we worked on setting her boundaries for what she would, how far she would allow conversations to go. So like if I have a, a friend who I haven't spoken to for a long, long time and like our friendship hasn't really, uh, really been intimate in a, in a long time. And I don't mean like in a romantic way, but intimate in like, I haven't heard from them in like years I will always allow for like a 20 minute conversation because that's what I have with all of my clients anyways. I'll always allow for a 20 minute conversation if they want to like catch up or if they have a question. But generally a lot of times it's, it's, uh, somebody has a question that they actually would like some coaching on. And when it's that, I will allow for 20 minutes, just like I do with any person who applies. And I then will make the offer to that if they would like to extend, I said, I always am willing to help out, but this is something that I do on a professional level, but I will always allow for a free, for tw free 20 minutes. So what boundaries can you set around your business, around your service-based business so that you're not giving away your self-worth for free? Like you have worked very, very hard. You have studied a lot. Your knowledge is of massive value to the world. Your experiences are of massive value. So how can you set those very, very clear boundaries in your life and in your business for who is going to be a friend and who is going to be a mentor and who is going to be, a, a who is more if fitting in the client category? Because especially when you're in the, the life coaching field or the health coaching field or any sort of service-based field where you're giving advice away as part of your, not, now with coaching, it's more not necessarily giving advice, it's more consulting, but with coaching, it's kind of guiding people to their own answers. With, with any sort of service-based profession, 
there are certain lines and certain boundaries that you need to create so that you don't have your self-worth dwindling. Because I've had that in the past where I've gone to lunch with somebody and eventually they really just wanted a free coaching session. And afterward, I was like, well, they paid for lunch and that was great, um, but that's not really necessarily my business model. And that's something that I had to realize in certain boundaries that I had to put up. Like back when I was teaching Pilates, I wouldn't give away a free Pilates session. Like I wouldn't. Somebody would say, oh, I want some exercise advice, and I'd say, oh, okay, here's here's a couple exercises that you could do, but I would always give them, like, a complimentary few minutes of my time and of my information and of my knowledge, but I had the clear boundaries around my worth and saying, okay, well, we have these exercises that you can do, but I would actually highly recommend you set up an actual one-on-one -on -one session so we can really dive deeper into the muscles. The same is true for the muscle of your brain. Like, I know your brain is... Like the same is true for the muscle of your brain, which is, and for reprogramming your mind, it's just retraining your brain. So if you have any sort of service-based profession where you are in the retraining, reprogramming of the brain sort of thing, any sort of life coaching, health coaching, business coaching, all of that is like 80% mindset anyways, that also has to have the clear boundaries of what makes someone a friend and what makes someone a client. So I challenge you. Write in the comments, what would your boundary be around how to delineate who is going to be a client and who is going to be a friend? And how do you say no gracefully to say, to turn them into, to turn that no into a potential offer? Because a lot of times, and here's the thing, especially in the coaching world, as a coach, it is my job to challenge people on their limiting beliefs. As a coach, it is my job to challenge people on their limiting beliefs because that is what's holding them back from going to the next level in their business and in the next level in their life, the next level in their relationships. That is what's holding them back. So as a coach, that is my job. When I find that there is a challenge where I'm coming up against somebody with a limiting belief of like, oh, well, maybe I don't need coaching or maybe it's not like maybe this is something that I would much rather ask for friend, a friend, um, a lot of times friends will placate. Friends will tell you what you want to hear. A coach says, no, 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 I'm going to challenge that limiting belief and raise you one. And that's the difference between a coach and a friend. So for me, when I see a limiting belief that's coming up with a someone who ha I haven't spoken to for a while, I will challenge them on that limiting belief and then I'll raise them one by offering my coaching services like I did in this conversation uh, at this event with this one woman where I said, hey, you have this belief, you have this thing that you're dealing with, here I'm going to raise you one. I see that you're kind of looking for some free advice and this is actually a paid service that I use, that I, I deliver, so I would love to offer you a, the opportunity to come work with me for 90 minutes. And she was like, look, I'm not really interested in doing that. I'm like, cool, totally fine, because you also have to be okay with hearing no on your end as well. So how can you say no gracefully and lovingly and compassionately and be able to take the nose as well when you hear them. So let me know in the comments below, what did you love about today's live stream? What did you love about it? Let me know what your top takeaway is, and I will see you later. As always, my fellow queens, own your throne, mind your business, make it rain. Ciao. For more info on how to create a body, business, and life that rules, visit crownyourself.com.